Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and in this video, I'm gonna be doing something I vowed I would never do. I'm gonna be demonstrating how to safely discharge a CRT in a compact Macintosh. Because of the repair work that I do, I have to discharge the CRT in Compact Max all the time. But the reason why I've never posted a video of the process is because everyone seems to have an opinion on it. And I didn't want to be in a situation where I demonstrate a particular procedure and then people jump into the comments section and say, you're doing it wrong, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. So what I've done is I've actually printed out a copy here of the Apple Technical Procedures Manual. And this is the section on discharging the cathode ray tube. So if you don't like this particular process that I'm about to go through, please don't complain in the comments section of this video, take it up with Apple. So let's talk about safety precautions. Obviously I can accept no responsibility if you decide to do this yourself, but I am going to try and demonstrate the safest way of discharging a CRT. If you're the sort of person that doesn't want to do this, this video is not designed to try and talk you into it. But if you're the sort of person that's gonna do it anyway, this is designed to try and stop you from killing yourself in the process. Now, before we do anything, the very first thing is to unplug the Mac. That in itself is a contentious issue. Some people basically say that you need to leave it plugged in because when you discharge the CRT, the electricity has got nowhere to go if it's not connected to earth. But this is not the case. If you leave it plugged in, you're actually leaving yourself open to a whole bunch of other risks. So unplug it. It is not needed to be plugged in when you discharge the CRT. And here are a few other safety precautions. And these aren't specific to discharging a CRT. These are general precautions for whenever you're working with high voltages. The first thing, take off any jewelry, any watches, anything metal from your hands. The second thing is, try and work with only one hand. Keep the other hand in your pocket or behind your back, but you don't want to have two hands in the computer at any given time. And the reason for that is that electricity always takes the path of least resistance, and you don't want that path to be through your body. So if you have one hand on the chassis of the computer and the other hand accidentally touches a live wire, you're going to send that electricity right across your chest, and you've got some fairly important things in there. So make sure only one hand when you're working on the computer. Thirdly, don't use a grounding strap. As I said before, electricity takes the path of least resistance and you don't want your body to be that path. So you don't want to be grounded, you want to be insulated. So wear some rubber soled shoes. Another recommendation, don't do this alone. Uh, it's good to have someone around who can either render first aid or call emergency services if you do yourself a mischief while going through this process. And lastly, wear safety goggles. That's probably overkill. That's more like it. If I'm to be totally honest, I generally don't wear safety goggles when I'm discharging a CRT. But there is merit in the recommendation. A CRT is glass, it's a vacuum inside. If it breaks, the resulting implosion would send glass shards everywhere. One of the essential items we need is a discharge tool. Now we're gonna make our own just using a screwdriver and some wire and an alligator clip and a little bit of electrical tape as well. Uh, so the screwdriver you wanna use, you wanna make sure it's got a reasonably long shaft on it. You wanna make sure that it has a good uh, plastic insulated handle. Uh, with the wire, uh, make sure it's some fairly decent stuff. This is actually 25 amp wire, which is overkill. Um, you know, some 15 amp wire would be fine. Just some wire that you would use for wiring up a house, that's, that's fine. Um, and then a uh, decent sized alligator clip. Uh, now I have joined the alligator clip to the end of this wire. And then I have stripped uh, the, a good few inches off the end of this, uh, of this wire, this end of the wire. And I'm basically gonna get this and wrap it around this screwdriver here and just give it a few twists like that. So that is making good contact with the screwdriver shaft. And then I'm gonna get some electrical tape and I'm just going to tape that up there uh, just to keep it in place uh, and stop it from moving anywhere or coming apart. 
And here is our finished discharge tool. Now one interesting thing is that people often talk about putting in a bleeder resistor. So that's a higher resistance resistor that they put in line along here. And the idea is that when you discharge, rather than it coming out a single snap, a single spark, it actually bleeds out slower. Now an interesting thing is that the very first version of Apple's own discharge tool had a bleeder resistor in it. But they ended up revising it and the later version of the discharge tool had no bleeder resistor in it. And that was because the feedback from the techs were basically saying they preferred the sound, the crack of that discharge to let them know that it had actually happened. If you're using a bleeder resistor, you can be in there poking and you don't actually know if it's discharged because you don't hear anything. So without the bleeder resistor, you do actually get a crack sound when you hear that spark. So Again, it's one of those uh, contentious issues where some people say you should have a resistor in there and others say you shouldn't. Um, but given that Apple's own discharge tool didn't have one, I'm going with that option. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using a Macintosh Plus. Now the later model Macs had a bleeder resistor installed. And what that does is it basically slowly discharges the CRT when you turn the power off. The Macintosh Plus did not have a bleeder resistor, so it will provide a better demonstration of the discharging process. Now keep in mind that even if you have a newer Mac that does have a bleeder resistor, it's still a good idea to go through this process. And the reason is that those bleeder resistors can fail. Even if you're 99% sure that the CRT is discharged, go through this process just for that 1% chance that it's not. Okay, so the cover is off and now I'm going to take off the shield and let's have a look inside. Now, this is the flyback transformer. Uh, this is the unit here and this runs to this red wire to what is referred to as the anode cap and that is where the high voltage is. So that's the danger area uh, and that's what we're going to be discharging. One of the very fragile parts of the CRT is right at the tip of the yoke here. Now don't do what I'm about to do here, but there is a little glass nipple just there, and that's used to seal in the vacuum. Now if that gets snapped, and it's incredibly easy to do just by bumping this on the end, and in particular if you're using an SE, a Classic, an SE30, they have a much larger board on the back here. It's very easy to bump that board and then snap that glass off. Now, if you do snap that glass off, you'll hear the uh, air rushing in. It'll no longer be a vacuum. It'll no longer work. There are no repair paths for that. You would have to replace the CRT. Okay, so let's start the discharge process. So the first thing we need to do is we need to connect the alligator clip of our discharge tool to ground. Now, for the 128K, 512K Macintosh Plus, Apple recommend that you connect it here. As you can see, there's already a ground strap coming out of that screw there, and that's where they recommend you place it. For any of the later Macs, you can attach it to any part of the chassis. But for the Macintosh Plus, to avoid any damage to the logic board, they recommend placing that there. <clears throat> then we basically get the other end of our discharge tool, and we work that in underneath this anode cap. So we feed it in here. And you just feed that down until the screwdriver makes contact with the metal prongs under the anode cap. And you may hear a spark. If you don't hear a spark, just hold it there for a couple of seconds to make sure it's fully discharged. And that's basically it. Now, should you need to remove the anode cap, uh, perhaps if you wanted to remove the analog board or replace the CRT, you can push it down sideways until one of the prongs is released. And then you can then lift the other prong out. And if you have a look, you can see there are two little metal prongs that hold that in position. If you need to put it back, uh, you put one prong in place, then bend down until you can feed the second prong in, and then just push that down firmly and it's in place there. And the Mac Plus is quite roomy inside because it doesn't have a hard drive. But the SE, the SE30, the Classics, they don't have as much space. So you have to be a lot more careful when you're working around inside them that you don't touch something by accident or break something. Uh, but other than that, the process is the same. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. 
Because of the repair work that I do, I have to discharge the CRT in Compact Max all the time. But the reason why I've never wanted to... <laughs> Isn't that right? Hello.